Hi guys, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and I'm the artist behind Whitehouse Art. Thank you for joining me today for one of my mini tutorials. Be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see other videos like this one. Let's get started. So for today, I'm going to be walking you through how to paint a cactus with watercolors. Um, for today's class, you'll need a watercolor palette. I'm going to be using a variety of colors, including some pinks, some medium greens, some very light green, and I might throw in a little bit of teal here and there as well as um, some yellow. Um, you're going to need some brushes. For brushes, I like to use an angled brush as well as a liner brush, and I sometimes do my splatters with a flat brush. We're going to start by drawing out the cactus. So for this little guy, I'm going to put him in a pot. So we're going to start by drawing out a little pot. I'm going to make mine more oval. The drawing doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to draw the circle opening, the top. And once I get the shape I like for the pot, I'm going to start drawing the little cactus. So he's sitting in the soil, so about halfway up you want to start doing the base of the cactus. So we're going to do one big arm here. And I'm going to erase some of these lines where I don't want them to be, but I'll just start by leaving them in. Makes it a lot easier. So I'll draw a circle here. Another one here. And that should be good for the shape. And now I'm going to go ahead and erase some of the lines that I was talking about that I don't want to have. So I like to use a small white eraser. And uh, for this one, I think I'll erase this line here and then just draw it in a little bit. Erase this line. This one is good, and then we'll erase a little bit of this going through the cactus so that the pot is behind. And lots of this will be colored over anyway when we get started. So that's pretty much all you want to have for the basic outline to get started. And you can do your arms however you want, have as many as you want. There's not really a lot of right or wrong where it comes to cactuses. They grow kind of how they want. So, so yeah, so we'll get started. Um, first things first, I'm gonna do the base of the pot. So we're gonna go and add clear water, with your angled brush all along the base of the pot. And so this base, I'm gonna keep a little bit of white spots in it. And if you have a fairly dry brush, it leaves sort of uneven white spots and that's okay because this is like a terracotta pot. So we're going to want it to have some unevenness to it. And as for colors, I think I'm going to use a little bit of light purple. But you can kind of use whatever colors you have in your palette. It's not too important which ones you choose. I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow ochre. I didn't really have a plan for the pot in advance. It's not important to have a huge plan for the colors of the pot you can use any color. These little pots come in a whole bunch of sizes and colors, sorry. I'll throw in a little blue over here. I can never make anything, just one color, so. So these little terracotta pots sometimes have little imperfections in them. Use a little bit of the Payne's Gray along the edge again. Then draw a few dots here and there. I'm going to let that, that one dry up now. And then because I don't like to work on the same parts um, 
that are touching. Sorry, I don't like to work on parts that are touching at the same time because they bleed into each other. We're gonna kind of bounce around on this painting. So next thing, I'm gonna actually work up and start on the cactus and I'm gonna to start towards the top um, and work my way down. So first things first, I'm gonna just fill in this arm as well as this one. And then I'm gonna take my bright lime green and just drop it in here and let it bleed and do its own thing. We're gonna to have to add more than one layer of watercolor on here. So if it doesn't bleed as much as you like or it lightens a little too much, we're gonna go back and add more. So that's not to worry at all. So we add the lime green and then I'm actually gonna throw in a little bit of yellow here too. And then I'm gonna bounce over to this side and add clear water over top. My water has a bit of yellow tinge to it, but that's okay. I'm being careful not to add too much clear water because you don't want it to pool on top of the page. If it's pooling, that means you're using too much. You wanna have more of a sheen versus a pool of water. And then for this arm, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the dark green, or medium green, I should say. Just add it along the base. I'm gonna do the same thing here, just add a little bit of difference. And then I'm gonna start on this one. And the reason I'm bouncing around like this is as I said, I don't like to work on parts that are touching. So bouncing around from arm to arm allows me to let them dry and then come back to them. And then we'll throw in a little of that medium green in this one too. And then last but not least, this little arm down here. And this one I'm gonna do a little bit darker. It's towards the bottom. It's probably shadowed by some of the other ones. So we're gonna make this one predominantly the dark green. section the one that's in the dirt and this one I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow and then a little bit of green on the bottom oops sometimes the yellow stays in there but that's okay and I used a little too much yellow so I'll just soak up some of the yellow with the dry brush and then add more green over top and so now that the base has had time to dry, I can actually go in and add another layer because I just feel like that needs a little bit more on top. So we just add clear water over top. And then I'm gonna take some yellow ochre and add that again on top. And then a little bit of the paint's gray. I'm adding a shadow down below, I've decided. Now if you take a clean dry brush and then just run it along the outside, it'll actually soften the edge of that shadow a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more blue over top again. I think that's good for color on the pot. Now we're gonna go ahead and add uh, the line around the rim of the pot. And this time I'm okay with a bit of the yellow bleeding in. I'm gonna use the yellow ochre and just add that line. So 
we'll let that dry before we go adding the soil. Now, I think because this is mostly dry, this would actually be an okay time to go in and add the centers. Now, I don't like it to be extremely wet, but a little bit of bleeding into the center is okay. We just don't want it to all bleed in. So this time I'm gonna allow it to, because it'll still maintain some of that differentiation between the arms. So you can kind of, you'll have to be the judge a little bit of how dry it is. You don't want it to be very wet when you go in and add more color in the center, but, or sorry, add color in the center. You'll notice I always start with clear water first, almost always. With detail work, I don't necessarily, but whenever I'm adding that first coat, I almost always start with the clear water first. Now, while I was doing that, this seems to have dried up quite a bit, and so has the rim. It's hard to tell sometimes without looking at it a little bit sideways, but it looks like it's dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some of that soil along the bottom. So just filling in. You know what, I just noticed as I did that, there's still a little bit of water here it bled in and we don't want the black to bleed in that would be bad so I'm going to take a paper towel just lift that out and just make sure the rim is completely dry and we'll start again black has a tendency to really take over if it bleeds so you don't want to put it next to part of the cactus that's still wet or that black will bleed right in or the paint's gray so now I'm gonna take, take my paint gray and follow along where I put the clear water. Then I'm gonna fill in the clear water with more paint gray. And we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna move up here now to this part where it's still wet and I'm gonna add a little bit of the Payne's gray right here as a shadow where the arm is. And a little bit of the medium green to help blend it in. So now with the arms that are dry, we can add some of those little dots that you see on cactuses. So we're just gonna take the medium green and add the dots now. Just kind of randomly around. And the ones that are dry. I'm using the tip of my Brush. Oh, you can see it's still wet here, so it bled as soon as I... This one's still wet too. So we're going to have to let it dry a little bit before we can add some more. So we'll do that, and when we're back, I'll show you what to do. All right, so now that it's dried, I'm confident I can go add more of those dots that we were doing before, and there won't be that bleeding occurring. So I'm gonna take a smaller brush this time. It's a little easier to work with. And I'm gonna to continue to add the spots all along the cactus.
going to take a little bit of the Payne's Gray and I'm going to add a bit of definition around the pot, just in certain areas, because I feel like it just needs a little something. So we're gonna allow the brush to very loosely just jump off the page so it's not a sharp outline, it just it's a subtle outline. I'm going to add a little bit of texture on the soil. Just by letting the brush skip off the page, add little spots in the soil. As it dries, you'll be able to see it more. I'm going to add a bit on the cactus itself. The soil has maybe dirtied the bottom of the cactus a little bit. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit of purple and we're going to add that on the pot. And then I'm going to darken the shadow. With watercolor, it's all about building in layers, so as you go, you can kind of see where you want it to be darker, where you want it to be lighter. So I think that's all I would do for the pot, just keep it nice and simple. And then I'm going to actually add a few of these little nodules on the cactus. Sometimes see these on cactuses, so I'm going to add them. And they often have a little bit of pink right on the top. So I'll add that. Darken this edge here. So now that that's all been done, what I'm gonna do is actually go back and add white dots to it after, but I need that to dry. Once again, I need it to dry 100%, so we're just gonna let this go, and when I come back, I'll show you what I mean by those white spots. All right, so now that all the green is dry, we're gonna go ahead and add those white dots that I told you about. I like to use something called poster paint. It's nice and thick, and it goes on quite opaque. So basically, over top of all the green, we're gonna add little white dots. So this can take a little bit of time. But basically the green represents the shadow underneath the white dot.
hopefully at this point you're starting to see the painting come together a little bit more. With watercolor, because it's such a quick medium, you can always redo it if there's something you're not happy with. It's a quick thing to start fresh. It's not the same as working with oils where you have weeks of drying time. Nice part about oil paint though is that you can easily paint over top, whereas watercolor I find if there's something you're very unhappy with, it's best just to redo it. So I think I'll do one last finishing touch. I'd like to add a little bit of the Payne's Gray into the cactus itself just to help balance all the darks you're seeing here. So just adding some detail in certain areas where it's connecting, certain areas that are already darker. I'm just going to add some. There's not a heck of a lot of rhyme or reason as to where I'm adding the, the dark, just trying to balance it out a little bit with the base and how dark that is. pretty good. So that's it for today. I'm going to sign this guy and I think it is complete. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys had fun. Be sure to check out my other videos for more inspiration and leave a comment below with some ideas that you want to paint. Thank you and see you next video.